Coming up on Pet Heroes. A cat plays a key role saving lives as part of an ER veterinary team. And could a chihuahua be the difference between life and death for a young beaver? Hi, I'm Jason McCoy, and welcome to Pet Heroes. Every year, countless animals are abandoned and left without homes. But when these animals get a second chance, how can they pay it forward? Well, here are two stories of rescued pets who became very unlikely heroes. Cats at Home Hospital in Cloverdale, BC, is a clinic that caters exclusively to felines. Dr. Susan Thompson and her husband, Jim, opened this cat-friendly hospital in 1995. I originally started doing cats and dogs, and I just found that I had an affinity for cats. Um, I love dogs, I have two dogs at home, but um, with kitties, I just seem to have a rapport with them that made my job easier. There's no dogs here making noise, no barking. Um, and because we focus just on cats, um, I think we sometimes have a better sense of what their needs might be and uh, their medical conditions. Anyone who visits the clinic will eventually bump into Pico, a ginger cat who has come to be known as the face of the clinic. He's one of the coolest cats I've ever met. He's actually a family pet, um, but he never adjusted very well to being at our house. Doesn't like the home environment, and he finds the other cats in a house to be rather scary. Here at the hospital, he, he doesn't mind the other cats. He's, he seems to sense that this is different. The space is smaller, and he likes that better. He's, he's much happier here. I would say that if you went to virtually any hospital, you would find a rescue cat or a rescue dog that uh, somebody in the practice fell in love with and wanted to um, give them a second chance. Pico's second chance came very early in life. Susan remembers Pico showing up as a very sick kitten who faced very risky surgery. My training initially is in surgery, so I was uh, working as a locum there doing a lot of surgery, and this little kitten was brought in. He had crystals in his urine, and his urethra, which is the um, passage between the bladder and outside, had ruptured. He was very tiny, probably about 12 weeks old. And um, because I had done the surgery a lot, never in such a tiny kitten, um, my colleague and I, we just decided we'd give it a try, and if it worked, great. And it did, amazingly. So that's how he came into my life. He's so sociable here at the hospital. It's, um, it's like this was his job that he was born to do, and he loves the, uh, meeting the people up front. But Pico is much more than just a friendly cat. He's an integral member of the clinic's medical team. When we would need to show someone how to pill their cat, we just take Pico out and show them how to pill a cat with Pico because he allows us to do anything with him and it makes it look really easy. He loves uh, meeting the people up front. He doesn't hiss at any of the other cats, the patients that come in. He's very respectful, leaves them alone. He loves to lay on the front desk just greet people when they come in. It's a great client relation tool, that's for sure. He's the boss. If he uh, wants to sit down in my chair, he sits down in my chair. <laughs> Don't you, buddy? Me? Hey? Jeff Wheeler's cat, Louie, is one of many cats that can be thankful Pico is always there. Louie was an amazing case. And they were very worried one night because Louie had uh, bled from his foot. He didn't have a wound. They couldn't see any reason for it. Um, but there were bloody footprints all over the house. Well, I talked to my mom, who's had a lot of experience coming in here with her other cats. And she suggested we bring him in here right away. And that was fine with me. I was pretty much ready to, to take any help we could get. At first, they said that they thought it was a burn of some kind. A mess. and he had a tiny little puncture hole in a pad on, it, on his front foot. Um, and we initially thought it was a spider bite that had injected some toxin into the pad and prevented blood clotting. So they wrapped it up and sent him back home with me. 
Uh, the next morning, it was a real huge mess. It was a lot of blood, just clean it up and let's get him back to the, the hospital right away because obviously there was something really wrong. And Louis is very clean, so he kept washing himself and washing himself and um, actually drinking his own blood um, to the point where he, he lost a large percentage of his blood volume, became very, very weak. Louis has lost a lot of blood and will definitely need a transfusion. But where does a small clinic find enough blood on such short notice? He was not doing well at all. He was not responsive, and he seemed pretty not himself and, and pretty down. Coming up on Pet Heroes, Louis's life hangs in the balance as he waits for a blood transfusion. Louis's mysterious paw wound is serious enough he'll need a transfusion. But transfusions for cats are complicated procedures, and Louis growing weaker by the minute. A transfusion starts um, once we've identified we need one with um, making sure that we have a donor and a recipient that match. And not only that, they have to go through cross-matching, which is where you mix each cat's blood together and do certain tests on it to make sure that there will not be a transfusion reaction. A transfusion reaction would destroy the blood that was donated into the into the cat and so render it useless. The most common blood type is A, and Pico is an A. He's probably done about 10. Didn't start till he was about five, and he's 13 now. Um, the last one he did was, um, I would say, about a year and a half ago. Wendy McClellan, a doctor of veterinary medicine, offers insight into blood transfusions for pets. Blood transfusions in animals are interesting. There's a big difference between dogs and cats. With dogs, there's several different types, and you can have kind of a universal donor in dogs. But with cats, they're either born type A or type B, and they're born with what's called allo antibodies against the other type. So you absolutely cannot do a blood transfusion in a cat without typing them first. Fortunately, the odds are in Louis's favor, and Pico's type A blood is a match. Now, it's a race against the clock, and Pico knows the drill. Whatever he's doing, he's, he stops doing it. And within about 20 minutes, we can get the blood um, from Pico, and maybe another five minutes to start getting it into Louis. And at some points, it is that critical. There isn't a lot of time. She collects 60 cc's, so that would be three 20 cc syringes. They don't have a lot of blood volume. The most you want to take out of a cat is 20% of their blood volume. And in a 10-pound cat, that amounts to 250 mils or a cup. So there's really not a lot you can take. And if they have underlying disease, it can really put the donor at risk. Even if the transfusion is a success, there's new complications for Louis. We found out that he had hemangiosarcoma, which is a blood vessel cancer and that's where the bleeding was coming from. And though it's something of a relief for Jeff to finally know the cause of Louis's bleeding, the treatment options are very limited. Well, I think they pretty much said they wanted to amputate his arm at that point, and I haven't had any experience with animals that have really their arms amputated, so I was kind of freaked out. In cats, we always amputate the entire limb. Because cats do very well are very agile. Jeff accepts amputation is the best option. Now, there's not much more he can do but wait and hope for the best. When Susan finally emerges from surgery, she has good news for Jeff. Louis should make a full recovery. He's been almost better than he was before. He does everything he used to, he runs all over the place. He's really, really happy. It's, uh, I'm really happy that we've been able to have him for this much longer. Cats do really well with three legs. Lucky is, I'm not sure the right word, but we were able to save his life. Barbara Walmer is head of animal behavior at the Calgary Humane Society, an organization that helps thousands of rescue animals each year. Anytime an animal can impact another animal's life, um, it is definitely a heroic um, action. Do they fully know that they've necessarily saved a life? I don't know. Um, but it is very neat to see that unfold in front of our eyes. 
because sometimes us as humans don't do the same thing. Less than a year after helping save Louis's life, Pico's own health takes a drastic turn. Uh, in January of this year, um, my staff, they noticed that Pico was losing weight. And he's always been a big cat. He loves his food, always eats all his food, and he just wasn't eating as well as he had been, and he was losing weight. So I did an examination and found a mass in his abdomen. Um, it turned out to be cancer. And uh, uh, when we took him to surgery, um, initially I thought that, um, that he had so much cancer inside him that the fairest thing for him was not to let him wake up. When uh, he was opened up, uh, it was apparent that there was more cancer than uh, anticipated, and uh, it was, uh, I believe, covering one of his kidneys as well. So we had another cry. Should we decide to go ahead, or should we decide to say goodbye to him at that point? The uh, staff had talked to me when I was in surgery and said, um, you know, Susan, give it, a, give it a go, and let's see what happens. We're not going to let him suffer or hurt and um, let's just give him a chance. He deserves it, and um, that's what we did. Thanks to the efforts of Susan and her surgical team, Pico pulls through. Maybe he has a little guardian angel, I don't know, but um, he's done really well, and right now he's in complete remission. Well, the proverbial statement is cats have nine lives, and you know, we're not sure how many lives he's on, but he's certainly moving on to the next one, and, and um, we're hoping that he's got a few more because he, uh, he's a special type of kitty and we really enjoy his uh, presence. He's a hero to me because he never complains. He never fights, struggles, um, and cats are very independent. They're, they certainly, if they don't like what's being done to them, they, they'll demonstrate it. Pico's role as an easygoing assistant is integral in so many ways. Whether he's donating blood, or helping demonstrate how to give cats medicine, or simply offering hope and inspiration as a cancer survivor, Pico is an unflappable ambassador for the clinic. I think it's great that Pico was a rescue cat, and often these rescue cats end up, end up being clinic mascots and, and get called into service like this. All cats need homes, and it's great to consider a rescue cat when you're considering bringing a cat into your home. Pico's a hero for helping out cats like Louie uh, that would not be here without a cat like that to, to help out and you know donate his blood, and it's, it's a wonderful thing for sure. He's demonstrating to my clients, to my cat owners, that bad things happen, but they can have a good outcome. And maybe at some point that will be useful for them in their cat's life. Maybe they'll get a bad diagnosis and remember Pico and give their cat a chance. He certainly is amazing. Next on Pet Heroes, a feisty chihuahua is called into action to help save the life of a young beaver. We just saw how Pico, a rescued cat, played a vital role in saving the lives of other cats. Next, we meet Manuel, a little dog making a big difference in more ways than one. Kim Monteith lives just outside of Vancouver in Burnaby, where she works at the BC SPCA. What I do at the SPCA is I'm a regional animal welfare supervisor, so I actually have the best job in the whole organization. I get to teach volunteers and staff how to care for the animals, what the animals need. They get to work a lot with the public. Kim works alongside her two dogs, Ko and Manuel. Ko is really easygoing. He's a Doberman pit bull that uh, he was beat up, but very uh, he's very socialized. And then there's Manuel, a tiny chihuahua packing some big attitude. Manuel's personality is very feisty. He's very loving, very, uh, it's a little bit of everything. If You can't really say he's one way or the other. He just is really easygoing, but outgoing and very demanding, loving, standoffish, fearful. <laughs> he's, he's a little bit of everything. That's what makes him so special. Manuel was abandoned outside of one of Burnaby's busy SkyTrain stations, starving and in desperate need of medical attention. And we uh, found out that he had a dermoid sinus. 
which is, I, I guess, similar to spina bifida in people, people. So we raised some more money and had some surgery done for him. And he, uh, yeah, he's a success story. Manuel had to spend more than six months in recovery. And because I had spent so much time with him, I kind of bonded with him <laughs> and then couldn't part with him. So he ended up uh, staying with me and uh, yeah, he's been with me ever since. I do think that animals um, get some type of idea that they are getting a second chance um, at things. Quite often, people come to an adoption center like the Calgary Humane Society looking for that special pet. They're wanting um, a different type of relationship. So between the animal and the person, I think it's a very intense, interesting relationship that can be created. Chihuahuas as a breed are very energetic, they're entertaining, they're comical, they're very loyal, uh, but they can also be very suspicious of people and very aggressive to strangers, which is why we playfully call them in veterinary medicine, land sharks. Charlie Leung has been with the SPCA for over 30 years. Working with animals and making a living at the same time you cannot be better than that. Charlie was on duty the day Manuel became a key player in a very unique rescue operation. Responding. 10-4, we're on the way. An emergency call summons Charlie to the tidal pools at Stanley Park, where a confused young beaver is in big trouble. He's followed a freshwater stream to the ocean and somehow found his way into the salt water. For many beavers, salt water can be deadly. Lanny Sheldon is a biologist working at the Burnaby Wildlife Rescue. They have a really high mortality rate when they are getting into salt water. And if they get, reach that critical stage, it's really hard for their kidneys to process. They often go into congestive heart failure and pneumonia. So it's, it's a pretty serious thing. So whenever this happens, we definitely need to get them into care. Charlie decides to call for backup. Luckily for Charlie, Kim is only minutes away. And luckily for the beaver, Kim has a friend riding shotgun today, her fearless chihuahua, Manuel. He'd swim into shore when he saw people, and then they'd make noise or talk, and then he'd swim back out. So I spoke to my coworker, Charlie, and he said he's probably looking for his mate or his mother, because they're, they're social, they, they bond with the partner. And then I remember that Kim had Manuel, and since Manuel is uh, same color as a beaver, maybe a little bit smaller, I said, well, well, let's try that and get Manuel down there. While Charlie tries to get the crowd to back up, Kim heads to her truck to grab Manuel. It's a total long shot, but Manuel may just be the difference between life and death for this distressed beaver. I got Manuel, brought him down to the beach with my big net, uh, with his little life jacket. Kim and Charlie prepare Manuel for an unusual water rescue. The plan is for Manuel to splash around in the shallows and hopefully lure the beaver into shore. Put Manuel on the beach and then walk into the water. Kim tries to reach the beaver with her net, but he keeps his distance and moves down the beach. Every extra moment in salt water increases the risk of serious damage. So we had to come back out and move down the beach to follow his path because he kept coming in and out so we moved down and did the same thing, and I stood in the water very still. Amazingly, Manuel's movements are helping coax the beaver closer to shore. Other animals calm other animals down. When they go through a traumatic uh, incident, they're always uptight and scared and things like that. Once they arrive at our shelter and they see other animals, then they'll calm down. And as he swam in, I just flipped the little net up and pulled him right up. Without Manuel, I don't think we can uh, get close enough to get the beaver that way. The beaver was very overwhelmed. All the people on the side trying to get a look, everyone's interested to see the cute beaver. And with the beaver's poor eyesight, all those people would have looked like one big, scary, single thing. So I think when the beaver saw Manuel, you know, he probably much smaller, much quieter, and didn't smell like the scary people. And I think he was attracted to, to something safer. Manuel's first time being a beaver decoy is an unqualified success. 
by coaxing the disoriented beaver out of the salt water, he saved it from a deadly toxic reaction. He made the important uh, contact and, I guess, convinced the beaver to come in. Once we got the beaver in the net, then we take it to Bernard B. Wildlife Rescue uh, for them to take care of Benwell. This beaver specifically would have had um, what we like to call hydrotherapy, which basically in layman's terms means they get to swim. And we'll make sure that they're stable enough um, to be able to swim without you know, causing any duress to the patient. We're able to manage their body temperature, and they're basically flushing their system. Instant, instantly and, and instinctively, as soon as they go in the pool, they start swimming around and drinking. You just see them guzzling water. Extra fluids are injected to help flush the toxins, and anti-inflammatories help control swelling around vital organs. The combined treatments nurse the beaver back to health, and he's released back into the wild near a freshwater stream. Organizations like the SPCA are so important in giving animals like Manuel a second chance. These animals are so deserving, and they almost seem to be extra loyal, extra loving, extra giving. And as it turns out, in this case, he gave another animal a second chance. Since his unorthodox beaver rescue, Manuel has stepped into an educational role for the BC SPCA. He now travels around with Kim, teaching children and adults alike the benefits of proper animal care. Manuel's a hero because he has helped, uh, he's actually uh, touched so many lives, both human and animal. He's uh, brought a lot of smiles to a lot of people's faces. He uh, has, uh, just from a cuddle, uh, from helping the beaver, from uh, helping a you know a child learn how to to handle a dog, how to, to appreciate a dog or, or an animal, he's he's you know touched so many people. And for me, I just couldn't live without him. Manuel and Pico, two incredible animals given a second chance at life, made the most of that opportunity. Whether it's donating blood to cats in need, or leading a beaver to safety. Pico and Manuel are heroes who continue to make a positive impact in the lives of both humans and animals. For more information, visit cmt.ca slash pet hero.